meantime, and still fighting while his teammates come to wow. support. And that fight is quick and clean for the side of T1. Oh, what an incredible start. They had a game plan from the very beginning, an instant seize nade, something we love to see when there's a fade and a raise on the server. No, we're not calling it that. And uh, yeah, just being able to push them back, they almost had to retreat immediately. But that wasn't just the, the only part of the plan. They were continuing running it down, putting that pressure onto FPX immediately. And wow, what a start for T1. Pistol on the board, Munchkin off to a flyer. And now we're just going to see, well, I, I was going to say an investment. It, Nichao just going to go with light shields. Interesting. And it's not an investment you see very often, just light shields no, really and nothing isn't. else. But I, I'm curious. I'll put it that way. I guess if they get a gun, it's, give, it's being given to him. Uh, well, I suppose that's the assumption. Yeah, 25 extra health. Ooh. Don't worry. Sean will explain this to us when we get back to the desk at the Absolutely. half time. It's fine. I he, see he, him he, writing he, notes right now, scribbling <laughs> frantically. He might, he might even have a Telestrator segment on it. Well, let's see if the success <laughs> will be found by FBX with this trendy investment. Immediately, you know, they're putting some pressure towards A. They've got their wall there, but T1 know what's going on. They're up close both on A and on C. You definitely get a sense that this squad likes to get aggressive. Uh, the pistol round, I guess, gave it away more than anything. In the end, conventional takeover B. Alarm bot takes contact. Actually, not even. Preemptive oh. strike. And that's got Berlin. Oh yeah, this is looking like a slaughter already. I saw being able to climb one somehow. They managed to make this one look a little bit more competitive. They should be able to clear things out. Ban left low and a chance to maybe do some extra damage. The robot chasing him at the end. AJ, he's just doing it for entertainment value. Oh, yeah. and never, never really in any doubt. Didn't break a sweat whatsoever. Well, look. Decent damage, all things considered. FPX get out of that one, smelling the roses. T1 don't have the opportunity to play a nice free round where they've got rifles and their ability to fight. <laughs> that was so close. Can you imagine? Uh, and that would have taken a bulldog out. That would have actually been huge. And look at T T1's investment. You know, they've got their two bulldogs still, picked up a vandal on side player, and everyone else taking it pretty light. So there's weaknesses here for FBX to exploit. See if they can reap the rewards, the seeds they planted just moments ago. Yuiko uh, already waiting up top. We're going to try and find a little bit of early aggression. They were wary of it. Like in the prior round, we saw in the pistol how aggressive T1 were willing to be, and that's something that FPX are definitely going to have to think about. For now, though, just patiently taking map control. They have a lot of utility to be able to play with off the back of the harbor to sort of section off portions of the map. And for the defenders, Ban has taken a little bit of map control, so they've been able to gamble that little bit more, even pushing up on B as well. They have taken a lot of space. They kind of know at this stage that they almost have to be locked in towards that seaside of the map, but they are going to start wrapping back around and pressuring elsewhere. Yeah, I do wonder if they've spotted, you know, you hear that turret when you get a little bit closer, snake bite comes down. Now you know, first of all, it's a trap play with two incredibly good sight defenders. FBX are making the right call, looking elsewhere. And it's Saiyan player to be dropped first. That's the big rifle out of the round now for T1. Look back to the Bulldogs on Munchkin, who's already taken a lot of damage. Carpe pushed out of the site. And B is most certainly taken late lurk from Nichao as well. Great potential for this squad. And because it's the wingman planting, when they go through to try and take advantage of the numbers, well, anything but ends up occurring. That's FBX with the first. Oh, really clean take into the site as well. I I'm liking how patient they're being because we sort of set this team up as this like hyper aggressive fast pace. So when we get to bind, that's kind of why I'm expecting, but this was very calm and controlled. They, they had expectations that their opponent were going to try and take map control against them. They were very methodical to sort of take that space back and end up keeping four players alive onto the board. Of course, for the other side of things in T1, they are going to have themselves an investment here. Plenty of rifles on the board, but no ultimates online just yet. Everything fairly level across the board. Yeah, this will be a much more grounded full by round. The real meat of the game about to come into play. Now we've seen T1's aggression time and time again. Over on C and A in that second round, even up against the pistols, they were willing to do it. It's denied by some early utility and the follow-up. It seems FBX will be gaining control over mound for now, but they're leaving their options open. A lurk around B, 
player as well sat on A waiting for the aggression to come through. And even an alarm bot if they decide to rotate. Plenty of options for them in the late round. Again, just taking their time. Collecting those orbs that are about to be under some pressure. The Mosh used to try and clear out some space. Normally there's a bit of an execution off the back of it though. Turret destroyed for Sire as he looks to get aggressive, but again, just waiting outside this C site. The high tide through to block off a lot of angles, but there's three players ready and waiting. Oh, nice Cs, it's gone through and it's caught some players. They're able to sneak up behind the walls and Carpe and Munchkin both falling. Puts a lot of pressure on Zeta to deliver and he's out. Giving up the site and playing for the retake. It's definitely the smart call. They love to grab a pick along the way, but that one cost them so much more as they crumble on this C site. FPX take control. Yeah, again, by the, the aggression of T1, just not really finding anything. They're constantly hunting and looking for that early information, but other than destroying the turret, it basically just comes down to the late round execution, and that's actually where FPX have been fantastic so far. Berlin, Lysor getting those initial entries, and then Aya, well, we, we've already highlighted him. His performance in their prior match versus EG made the game even look remotely competitive, which was not something we expected in their opening game. Now though, leveling things up, weaponry somewhat of a minimum, and okay, you do have yourself a, a lockdown on the side of Munchkin, but unless they get into a very good position, I have no expectation of him using this. Yeah, not in a round like this, although considering the damage FPX were able to do with classics in hand just moments ago, you, you have to wonder. And we haven't really seen FPX use Nichao's wall to get control over A. Constantly, T1 have been getting aggressive and holding these tighter corners keeping them back and even back from where they are now stuck inside the choke point so good ground being claimed here and they're certainly finding the lighter side of the map where t1 are not really defending it as steadfast that wall should be easy to bypass zeta doesn't have a ton of utility really we're looking at carpe and he's found the information at least but following up on it's going to be a different story altogether yeah, Reckoning is going to make make it so there's very little they can do in terms of holding. Little bro just about going to be able to get the spike plant in. Snakebite used to try and deter. How dare they, for starters, but more so. It's not actually going to work out, and what? they have used the lockdown. I am surprised by this. Trying to force them back, maybe expecting to get a little bit more in this round than we did, but... It's so passive anyway from their opponents, it doesn't make that much of a difference. Well, they've at least got that orb up. I mean, they're blocking off the sidelines for sure, trying to section off Yukal, but he is taking them all out. What a clean response from the side of FPX. It was pistols they were up against, and the main question in a round like this is how much damage can T1 do? And the answer was absolutely none. No, that, that was peculiar, especially on the site they were on, which is A, where you can have these very passive positions to actually play in the after plant. Like, okay, maybe you're able to cause some havoc, but a lot of the time, most teams are just like wall bang, spamming onto the plant anyway, and they had all their nanos and stuff down as well. I, I, I don't really see a world where they were ever going to get that one close, and even if they did, there was an all in the form of thrash, which would have denied them anyway. Yeah, it's, it's a really tough one. Look at this entry right away. Showstopper used, and he's almost paid a hefty price for that control and you know there was no one here they were playing the retake around b now it's time to retake showstopper through no one found halfway already but the blast pack will get him up close the shot is good berlin down and aya left on 15 hp he'll be cleaned up quickly you'd imagine has to be the last man standing denying that diffuse and not a hope in hell right back on the board our t1 <laughs> a little bit of a change of pace from the side of fpx but it seems like T1 were more than ready for it. Definitely locked in. Locked and loaded on that one. I like the more direct approach. When you come in with ultis like that, sometimes it's worth just committing them at the start of the round from the side of FPX. Get the control, maybe pick up a kill, and then play your post plants. But T1 seemed more than ready for that. Maybe that's why they used Munchkins on in the last round. He's already got five of the orbs back. <laughs> <laughs> All part of the game plan. <laughs> not a bad one. You can just throw the ult in if he's going to be multi-frag. And not something... That's the thing. You look at the rounds Stay they've focused. won so far, like the pistol, him getting a 3k, again, managing to do it in the last round. It's something you do worry if the rest of the team doesn't sort of step up alongside him. If they can keep that going forward and 
no surprise to see. Back to the slow pace for FPX, but you look at T1, already fully pushed in through C. Now the boom bot, in theory, should give that one away. As they've taken such a ridiculous amount of control and Lysor is already waiting. The turret with contact should mean that he immediately turns around and so does the rest of the team. Maybe even tucks into that corner. Oh, there's the smoke up. He knows now. Great position. They're clearing it, but the first player down. Now they can react. Ban on the trade. The rotation seeming to come through uh -oh. for Munchkin. Going to leave Ban to make this play by himself. Zeta shutting down, too. That is absolutely huge. The FPX have stopped completely, and the flank is now coming through. A desperation from Ai as he looks to bring the spike elsewhere and hopefully grab a plant. I don't know how much that's going to help them putting this into a 2v4, but on the B site, a spot that's very difficult to hold from. A little bit of a dicey fight, but it is going to be banned to win it. And now Aya left. I don't think he even knows that Munchkin's about to come around this corner. The drop down spotted, but Munchkin just playing this so safe. He actually goes peek it back out, though, a chance, but not this time. A great round from Zeta as T1 will convert back into the lead once again. And I'm, I'm liking their style of play. Like, normally you see this sort of level of aggression against a team that doesn't have, like, a Lurk or a Sentinel. They're doing it against the Killjoy, who's literally waiting for them. But just being able to take away such map control while the rest of FPX is grouping up, I almost assume that they're going to have to go for more of a default round this time out just to make sure they can't continue to do that. Now one of the difficulties being now T1 having Zeta pop off like that in the previous round. Viper's Pit locked in, ready to go. I could certainly help them recover from any sort of stumbles they have as the round goes on. FPX calling a timeout. They want to take a moment to gather their thoughts ahead of round number eight. We're coming towards the end of this half. And we're pretty close to neck and neck. Pistol round injection for T1. You know, it's definitely not the doom and gloom for this attacking side. An opportunity to bounce back when they move to their defense as well. Operator in play, that's one thing I'm seeing. We might just get Yuka changing the game completely on this attacking side. That scope weapon, it can turn the tides, but Saya player is doing just the same. We'll, we're gonna have a battle on our hands. Yeah, a bit, a bit of a, a change in what we've seen so far, but I understand it from the side of FPX especially like you, your opponent has literally been running it down C every single round you want to try and deny them that space make sure that they're not being able to push that far but I also like the adaptation on the other side from Sire which is just going to be okay they're probably not expected to be tapping operator now after what we've been doing it's a real chance for an early firefight you'd expect it's going to be here. there to be some sort of utility though on the other side but they've got a lot, right? Uh, look at FPX attacking, you're expecting Gecko pop up that flash, but hold on, there's the up right away! And Yuka is able to win that battle. We hyped it up, him against Saya player, both picking up oh, the operator, okay. but Ban has recovered it from his teammate's corpse. Found the pick. They still have Munchkin up close, so Ban can't afford to back off. He has to stay here, at least for now, unless they decide to give up the position, which does seem to be the call. Whoops, Munchkin got caught on the wall, but he's made it out. Now they're looking to bolster down at least their B defense for the time being. A shift to the right side of the map is the, is the correct call for T1 because that's where FBX are going. God, just taking, again, that slower approach. These are the rounds where FBX have been able to really get themselves their attack rounds onto the board. Of course, fairly high expectation for the attack to be heavier sided. So for T1 to be... Off to a strong start, it's a great position to be in. Again, Viper's Pit actually going to be thrown out as they look to late take into the B side. Van, I don't think he's going to be able to get much from here with the Operator, and it's going to have to be that full-on retake once again. Yukon's gone hunting as well. Just look at his position propped up on the boxes. That's a great angle that they're not expecting. And even as Van tried to clear it, he couldn't quite get there on time. The op certainly being a saving grace for FPX so far. Nichao with a challenge, and it's just about corrected in time. Starting to get scary. That stun couldn't be better. Munchkin's out. Surely not going to commit to this with an operator at his feet. He hopes to save it to the next round, but the spike, although it's ticking fast, there's still some time if they wanted to hunt him down. Aya has popped a flash. That's being heard. Munchkin knows there's someone hunting him, someone coming through the spawn. He could hightail it out of here, move towards the attacker spawn even, but... 
Well, he's hunkering down. It looks like they've given up, not wanting to lose any more weapons. Yeah, I, I think it's actually quite interesting because you look at the way this round actually played out, and I feel like T1 almost... They, they tried to set a trap on A, pushed them into the B site, and then didn't have anybody there on the B site to actually catch them. It was a, it was a bit of a weird round. Like you, you set up almost, in, in that scenario, you, if you have two on A, I'd want one of the A site players to rotate away as you put that pit down. So then you have a little bit more bolstering on the B side, whereas FPX just very quick on their mid-round calls. I think Berlin sees that P, he's like, all right, I'm out of there. I'm going straight back in. And that's the thing that really works out on a map like Lotus is just having those sort of quick, concise calls to get themselves back into position. FPX leveling up once more and a bit more grash. And that's not gone well. Nichao with a free opener looking for more. Ban somewhat caught him. No man's land, but the paranoia, well, it, it not only gets him. I was going to say he could have got him out of there, but he doesn't leave. In fact, his opponents completely fall off, and he still holds onto the angle. Yeah, he actually held the angle while setting up that smoke the whole time, just making sure no one snuck out. This is a man confident in holding this spot. We've seen T1 consistently get aggressive around this position, and it's something most teams will do. They always want to compete for rubble. But Ban is taking it to another level, still being here this late into the round, and FPX do intend to take it towards him. Flashes back online for Aya. Have some cascading utility to make their way out. And all that utils falling on nothing because Ban fell back. A great sense of when to give up the control. The question is, will a rotate come in on time? Ban could be under a lot of pressure. And just using the one-way smoke to try and deter players from going back into this A site through the double doors. Zeta realizing he has to try and help out his teammate a little bit, but the Cove is almost going to lock him out completely. And Aya with a solid entry. No chance for Zeta to make a play. And you look at the remainder, well, almost just diving in for risky plays on the side of T1. And FPX are more than prepared, just waiting for players to make a mistake. Sire's going to get himself a, an exit frag at this stage, but well, I, I don't see him going for this 1v3. I love FPX's ideas late into the round. Like, we've seen these adaptations before, but pumping the brakes going for some control over A main, and then they acknowledge where both those players are. They're able to isolate the fights. And you saw from both Zeta and Ban just overwhelmed as they peeked out into heavy traffic, three targets each. It wasn't easy to clean up. They have managed to carry forward this operator to the next round, much more passive post plant from FBX, not trying to hunt down again. Uh, but it doesn't matter to them by the looks of it. They've allowed the op to be saved a couple of times, and they're avoiding it pretty much every time. Yeah, and, and one of the things I think is worth highlighting in this matchup, I think Sire players always a, a huge call out because of how good he normally plays in a lot of these matches. But someone you sort of almost highlight on the other side is Yui Kuo maybe not being such an explosive duelist. So the fact that he seems to be performing to a fantastic standard off the start, Now gonna see if he can keep this up throughout the match. Operator gonna be handed over to Berlin. Maybe the expectation there is that Yuikor is gonna be taking that entry point. And on the side of T1, they've actually stacked into this A side. Bear in mind, weaponry is weak. They've got that operator and elsewhere just having pistols. We'll see if they can make something work. T1 of a lot of players here. The FPX have gone a couple times back in towards B. That might be the, the right call. No way for them to know that right now. They have a lurker outside of B as well, but just look at that. You can see Lysor pulling back, moving towards this A play. They're going to go into the stack. T1 primed and ready for this play. They haven't got the ultis to back it up, but over on FPX, they most certainly do. Thrash on his way, destroyed out in the open immediately. Is that his position given up? Still want to commit to it, but this is where the pistols can be most dangerous already. Yuka is going to be taken down. So too is Wingman, but a good trade. Azalea at least keeps this alive on their squad. Nice and comfortable with the plant coming through. And it's a two versus four that really doesn't look to be going anywhere. Yeah, just farming up some of those eco frags for Ayer in the end. I do like the fact that they're using that Reckoning basically in low purchase rounds for their opponents. It severely reduces the risk. Like Even if you know you're walking into a somewhat stacked site, those players are going to be ducking and weaving and with the sheriffs, it's not going to be the best way that you're going to be playing the game. So 
just having that easy around, making sure you can convert cleanly. And you look at the finances over on FPX, they are thriving as of right now. And for Cyaplow, I'll be honest, he's been out of the game. I haven't seen anything really from him at the moment. It's just holding on to that operator. Jane time coming through once again for him as he just hasn't really seen any action so far in this half. Uh, sixth round locked in for the side of FBX and this attacking side, like we were saying, you know, at four to three, T1 had got that pistol round to give them an injection of rounds. They stumbled a little bit afterwards, as is expected, round three, the fourth being a closed competition, the fifth being a walkover, but then it was a little bit of a resurgence and you start to feel like we've got a close game on our hands, but this pause coming out of T1 very much signifies <laughs> the fact that we have ended up spiraling slightly on their side. It's gotten out of control. They're losing their grip on a close half. And there's only two rounds left to compete for, hoping to end it neck and neck this time out. We'll see how much it's gonna do for them. Yeah, of course, the scary thing for T1 as well is, as said, the bind they're probably gonna be coming up against will be incredibly unorthodox. Last time it was the solo controller, double initiated, double duelist comp that was being run. The time before that, they swapped out a Brimmy and put in a Harbor. There's some very weird stuff coming through on Bind and definitely not the easiest stuff to play up against. Here as well, I, I don't think you're gonna be necessarily used to this combination of the, the Viper, Harbor, and then of course having little bro running in every single time. It, it makes things that a little bit more difficult and I think they have been finding it tough to sort of find the space. The, the only rounds that have really been working for T1 is aggression. Like taking that map control away, fighting them in the early stages of the round because the actual executes from FPX have been fantastic. Yeah, that's been the real issue. Like we've seen T1 in those first three rounds so aggressive and even with bands sticking around on rubble for so long in one of the previous rounds we saw, it's still tapered off slightly. That control has been given to FPX a lot of the time. I just look at C, a lot of players from T1 here. And the same thing can be said for FPX. There'll be some fake posturing on this A site, and we'll see what the response is. If you're T1, you're seeing this wall come up, you're assuming there's control over rubble now for FPX and that they're getting nice and aggressive. With three players on C and no contact seen, you do have to rotate eventually. But this is all a bait. Is that up close? Even have the turret there, they shouldn't expect ban, and the flash has not caught him. This could be huge, the smoke saving his bacon. If they come around this corner, it's very unlikely they decide to check this spot, especially with Zeta popping off, making noise, Ooh. although he has just started to fall back. Yeah, the patience might just be rewarded. It almost comes down to how much can they get, and that Dizzy's gonna be going through again, this time forced to retreat. So the same as before, like FPX are being methodical in their play. Wingman man sent through as well just to clear any of the close corners and they're just doing this almost for orb control. Faking out the space, four players currently on this side of the map and the one on the other side, Carpe, has just been decimated by the operator. Now they start hightailing it back towards the A site. The decision still yet to be made, FPX leaving this one very late and deep, but if they get into a post farm with that Viper's Pit, it's trouble for T1. There's 20 seconds on the clock and they still haven't made their way towards the site, but finally that decision is made. They've baited out the rotates to be controlled this game entirely so far. Like this round has been, been theirs on a. all over. And yeah, they're only realizing now that this is a problem after they burned up their lockdown. FPX are set up with a Viper's Pit with players inside with utility at plenty. Even the snake bite online for Nietzsche out late round and okay. Nice shot. Yukon is gonna be caught. That's a big pick. Aya, if he overextends there, that angle's being watched, but he'll catch more than enough. Two quick kills. Berlin following up, even saving an operator for himself. You can start to think this round is over. T1 looking for a save. Nah, the, the calling again from FPX has just been sublime. The amount of times they have walked into this B site and there has been no one there. Just off some fake execution being thrown in towards eight. They get the opener and then every single time you just basically see the gecko utility just flying through in onto that A site. And even so much so that in the last few seconds of the round, you watch T1 putting a lockdown in on the A site because they've been fooled to such a high degree. And then they get a free post plant. Nobody on the B site, not a single player aware that they could be setting up on this side of the map. And they haven't even come close in the retakes, even using the slight gaps in their own ultimates to just 
decimate T1. FPX right now, I'll be honest, they look like they're a level above. They absolutely do. Uh, again, the way they're controlling these early rounds is fantastic. Baiting out the C rotations. There were three players there. Ended up with one. They still flash it to clear. They move back towards A. Sell an A fake perfectly. Finish on B that's wide open. There's been next to nothing that T1 could do. They, they've been trying in the early round, but it's like FPX are reading from the same strat book so far. As we move on in to round number 12, the final one, T1's aggression is going to be displayed yet again on this defensive side. Pushed up on A, three players on rubble. They won't give up this control this round, but where do they go from here? They've spotted there's a player behind that wall. They know that. Benicio is patient allowing them to make a move while his teammates work out the rest of the map. I like the change from Boys Team Paranoia. They're gonna play that a little bit more aggressive. The Paranoia is gonna do the work, but it's whether or not the rest of the team are gonna start making a play on the other side of the map and how much oh, yeah. time Monster can actually be bought. Thrash sent through is gonna garner them an extra little bit of information and it's only gonna be the one for one trade. Nichao gone, but again, it's the same. They sell a ruse, the only problem though, it's the spike. The spike's facing back into the spawn. 28 seconds left is dropped on the deck. A mistake made by the side of FPX. They have to go back and retrieve this. And in the meantime, T1 can start re-aggressing. A one-for-one -one trade, 15 seconds. They have to go running into this B site, but they're gonna use that showstopper. That will grant them the space that they need to get into this plan. It's something. Operator as well. This could be beautiful for FPX to still manage, even after those fumbles earlier on in the round, to close this out. An eight to four scoreline will be huge. The timing is key, and Munchkins won it, leaving oh, so just nice. Berlin all alone. He'll use his waves to try and block off their sight lines, but they'll be through that in just a moment's time. Low HP on one, but neither will fall. Saya player with his third of the round, locking in five for T1. Considering how this ended up, I think FPX looked likely to take that to 8-4. T1 yeah. could be happy with five rounds. Yeah, I, I think it's purely just the mistake from Aya, like maybe not realizing that they'd given up that much control. If he goes through the doors, they, they get that plant for free. It's a, a lot easier, but it, it definitely wasn't good signs in this half for, for T1. They, they managed to get things to a respectable scoreline that they can take into the second half, but I think FPX were definitely the better of the two teams in the first. I think that's fair to say. An absolute joy to watch this FPX squad work on their attacking side. But now it's T1 who are going to be mounting the attack. FPX on their defense. And we'll see how they feel about their possibilities. Let's hear from Yuko, who we spoke to earlier. So, 然后他们说那些话我觉得没有那么紧张了，而且我们有两条命，所以我不怕失败。Let's put it down into a one v one and come. Playing into main, Ayang. Still, he spotted him surely. Just the edge of the gun, edge of the weaponry. Nails the shot. 我认为 T one 的风格可能也是呃偏激进或者是又有点偏稳健吧，然后。面对他们的话，因为现在老实说有输有赢，但是我觉得在大赛的上面的话，我觉得大家都是一样的，所以就看当当天的发挥，或者是当天呃谁状态比较好。对，我觉得还是一样学习为主，呃，然后野心的话，
shoot them up into the lead. Well, that's the thing. They lost the pistol in that last half and still managed to come out with the victory. And they probably should have made it even more dominant as well. So they're definitely in a good position for this one. But we'll see if they can take the second pistol. Great start for Berlin. Look at the damage that's already been done as well. Players tagged behind as they look to enter the site. It is a slaughter! Lysor puts the entirety of that execution down. And now Zeta going to try and get the ace. Little bro going to be helping out as Lysor ends with the 4K. Big pistol round out from FBX. The eighth round they probably deserved. Yeah, yeah, they were looking forward to close out the previous, but now that probably carries even more weight rather than just a number on the board. Instead, they get to follow up round two up against what should be next to nothing. Just look at that. Made it look like a fully automatic weapon. Four kills for Lysor and, well, Fair to say you're going to have a lockdown online in the near future. <laughs> yeah, we saw the same from Munchkin in the last half and maybe didn't have the impact they would have liked. Decent investment from him as well. Lysol going to go for the rifle in this one, just wanting to make sure there's no real risk of damage being done. Looking like more of the same potentially for the side of T1, but it could just be a goal of farming up some early orbs. You're also seeing the high tide used very deep on the seaside, almost just to shroud out information. Almost make it more awkward for T1 to really find anything. And as expected, a very passive hold coming out from FPX. They don't really want to take any risks in this round, put any map pressure onto their opponents and the play through the door. Yuikor is going to have to fall back a little bit here. Just play passive while the orbs are farmed up. Yeah, I mean, if you look at all these positions that FBX are occupying, there's nowhere that they can really be isolated, that T1 can force a one versus one fighter or an XV1 fight without them being able to take that pot shot and then fall right back afterwards. That's that smoke might complicate things slightly, but T1 are not going towards C. Hoping that the utility they put down and the presence made will cause a bit of a panic, a bit of an over-rotation. That has not happened. Ni Chao, the first sign that this defense is still standing strong on the A site, but he'll fall. Nate is good, forcing Lysor to the back site. Not a great position if those pistols get up close. They're going for the wide shots, though, and that is perfect for Lysor. Two kills, plan to come through. Players here, but denying that's hard through the box. Instead, going to try to just keep that planter stuck in there. Ban used his teleport to get out of there, but they've spotted him. They know exactly where he is with a bulldog in hand. Nice shot. The first found, dodging the nade now. Paranoia's given him some space. He's walked out, but they've got two different angles. Nicely closed out by FBX. Costly, if nothing else. Yeah, it's an expensive round, no doubt, but they'll manage to retrieve the rifle. They're going to find themselves the bulldog as well, so it, it's not the most loss, but definitely a little bit more expensive than they probably would have liked. And now with their opponents going to be coming back in with a buy, this is really where you need to see T1 actually stepping up to the plate if they are going to be competitive within this map. At least as of right now, FPX have been firmly within the driver's seat. And I think even maybe considering going for a bit of a heavier investment into this round, trying to break them a little bit earlier. Well, Tom, certainly feels like the stadium here has a favorite for this round. Yeah. FPX chance in full force, but you look at what they've got to work with. There's some weaknesses there. It's an uphill battle for this defensive side. Although not necessarily a round that I would chalk up to just damage. They definitely have the potential to fight for this two Bulldogs a rifle on Lysor, one away from having their lockdown online as well. But for T1, they're the squad that get a little bit of easier access onto these orbs. Pretty close to a showstopper on Saya player, but probably want to just leverage their weaponry advantage in this round. Bring them down. Look how passive they are on B. That's looking like a full B retake. Just yeah. expecting there to be pressure put elsewhere. Is that to do with or the lockdown, maybe? Being taken. Potentially. I don't have it online just yet, but maybe expecting to get a kill on the way. Definitely one of the easiest sites to retake. Right. Nice shot, though. My Munchkin and Sire. Solid start to this round. Nade to deny any further aggression, and the A site completely under their control. Managing to avoid any of that initial aggression. Left. And similarly to their opponents, just baiting in 
those initial takes and then forcing rotations from FPX. Yeah, the sad thing being, you've lost your rifle, your real rifle here. You can see the Bulldogs coming through for a retake. But now the question does turn to damage. How much? How many did they get, Mitch? Go on, call it. I'm going to say three. three. Although, I'm looking at T1. Very, very nicely grouped up. Looks like they'll be able to trade almost any kill. There's no one out of position. And, three is well, optimistic. I think that, that might have been Carpe's second kill of the game so far. That was incredibly crispy. Followed through. A Yukon falling. And, oh. Okay, a bit of panic here. Oh, the showstopper. That's huge. Honestly, you're going to trade a Ko for a showstopper? I'll certainly take that. <laughs> that, was, that was very panicky. And well, they, they do get one. Ban dies to the spike. Like It's, it's a bit of a... Carpe uh, tripled his kills, yeah. yeah a, bit of a bit of a shaky finish to what was a good round from T1, I'd say. But I, I guess for them, I'm not wanting any spice to come through anything crazy for FPX, but they're now going to come into this round. Rifles across the board, lockdown in play as well. It's also possible that, that was a fat finger, but I'm not really sure. I think it's more likely it was just sheer panic. Like, they could be diffusing. How far is it diffused already? Is he sticking it inside that cove? And then you're going to swing one by one. Maybe he kills you all. It's just easier to throw that away, especially when you've got other ulties coming online. This is a bit of a pace Near future. Yeah, very quick indeed. Saya player's already taken down Nichao, and the reinforcements will be late to A. Way too late, in fact, because with Lysor down, that plant is uncontested. Yeah, well, with Sire on the defensive side, you have the ability to avoid him. That, that was one of the things that happened a lot in that first half. He was sat there saving an operator, but not this time. Double entry. Good to see him starting to step up to the plate. And unfortunately for FBX, it almost looks like it has to just be the save. The instantaneous start to this round. It was mentioned in the video with Yuko that like, they expect this sort of mix of explosiveness out from T1. I think this is exactly what he's talking about. Just a complete change of pace to what we've seen so far. And already getting themselves within arm's reach of their opponents. The fact is, though, financially, T1 in a spot where they can afford to lose a couple of weapons if they really wanted to. Maybe try and hunt down some of these players, but they're not risking it. Not taking any damage at all, really, throughout this round. And, well, eight players are going to be alive at the end of it. I don't mind when we see such a passive call, especially when they have been so split. That A hold, very similar to the round before it, where once those two players go down, your chances just dive. The difference being, if you have weaponry actually invested. Oh, you got full on FPX bandana. I'm, I'm jealous. Oh yeah, the crowd is packed out. FPX fans here in force to support their squad. And well, the squad certainly needs it. This is their timeout. Rest assured, they can hear the crowd. They can feel the rumbles at times when they pipe up. Are you having fun yet? I see. But yeah, nine to seven. Not not the worst spot for FBX. They're going to take the pause early, give the chance to Nathan to have a little chat with the team, see what he can pull out of the bag. The problem is financially, again, they're not in the greatest of spots to do too much, but it might just mean that they decide to get that little bit more aggressive, try and take some of that space away. If we've seen from both teams, one of the things they're majorly sort of struggling with is that passive hold that's coming through from the attack, not really allowing them to mm -hmm. get the same level of control that they would want to. A lot of the time, Killjoy utility just being placed to deny any of that further aggression. Turret out. For now, though, an early build-up of players in towards that B site, but it does seem like much more of the same. Just going to be some minute investment on the players that didn't have anything to go with it. That's the thing. If they can get something done with these rifles, they Push still it. have that lockdown available to them if they want to try and go for the retake. Yeah, the potential is there for late round, and I think so far FPX have been put in those positions of having to retake T1's aggression, being rewarded time and time again. And this time, it's Yuka alongside Aya who are going to be challenged, both on the C side. T1 have a well, they do have a bit of control going out there for Zeta. Like he is swinging around rubble. He's got his wall to play around as well. And if he gets enough space, uh, they might start to think about coming back. Even the door opened here. Like there's a ton of presence being feigned. And I think I don't think they're rotating back to A. I think they're just hiding from utility, knowing that there would be a flash online soon, knowing that FBX would seek them out. 
And because they've avoided all of that intel gathering utility, they might go for a swing like that, and they've almost lost Yukod to it. That was T1's trigger point. They're rushing the site, and it looks like all control will Ooh. be theirs, even catching Aya on the way back. Yeah, another Sire player entry, and I believe at least the rifle might be able to be handed over to a teammate, but look at him go. Sire player just dying to take over. Oh. Yui Claw, though, has just come out of nowhere. The side swipe not expected. The aggressive position, it's these Razors going head to head to try and take over this round. The time, not even that far gone, still an opportunity for him to win this oh. one out. Still going strong, leaving it all on to Zeta. He's playing that post plant, knows exactly where he is. The ace potential, but it's so far back, and Zeta's still just sitting, but he's not landing it's the off. shots. It's already being Ooh. diffused, just looking to try and get it all the way, but Zeta will hold on. T1 scraped through the round, but FBX was so damn close with Yuriko. Only that he was caught with a knife out. That would have been a different result. So close in the end as well. Yeah. Fair play to Nietzsche Al for just sticking it underneath. That, that's the thing, a Red Bull clutch needed just to, to get through a round where you already got the entries. Like, yeah. you look at that and you go, oh, sire has got a couple of openers, he's taken over, and then just everybody dies within a matter of seconds. Yeah, that was everyone right there. Everybody's face was the same when he manages to get that quad kill, but luckily, Zeta holds on. And now we have the buy, that's the thing. Yuiko is not gonna have the rifle anymore because he's got the operator instead. And look at where he is already, by the way. First 20 seconds of the round, Yuiko has already pushed all the way up on C. Holding that wide angle with an up. But he won't have a chance to use it. At least not on that side of the map. Presence for B. Ooh. The split is on. Aya just about evading those shots. Falling back, but nobody's here to contest. Yet again, a free plant to be found by T1. So good at finding that space. And the Viper's Pit used to lock it down afterwards. Those <laughs> shots were close. But Aya will not find it. So we're set up. In a difficult position. This Killjoy ult is causing what? problems! But Sid has somehow picked up a double! What an absolute disaster! One player detained. Look at that repositioning as well. Carpe dodged the showstopper. Zed is back online inside the Viper's Pit. A third kill for T1. Carpe following and Munchkin closing. What a gorgeous round from this attacking squad. FPX got to start to sweat now. It's neck and neck. The heartbreaking thing with that double kill from Zeta is if they wait a few extra seconds for him to get detained, it's the freest kill of their lives. It's because they tried to start pushing in that little bit earlier. And because of that, I, I think he just basically just banked it onto them. <laughs> it's so like, perfectly it's almost, placed. They have to stay there, right? Because otherwise the lockdown is going to be destroyed. And they actually try to fall back once they hear it coming, but it's too late. Oh, what a disaster. Well, from the pistol round victory to get them through to nine to a streak of rounds now for T1. Allen's not going to be connecting the shots. In fact, it's a double for Ban. Munchkin with another. This round is already looking squeaky clean. Unless Nichao has something to say about it, and he does not. Last man standing, Aya, with a couple of pieces of utility, but no weaponry. No, has the classic. Doesn't even have the light shields with the classic. Nah, no. <laughs> Sean's gonna I'm be sad. shocked. Well, this one is oh. going his way. All right, well, you know, maybe he should have had heavy shields. Yeah. He's in a lot prettier right now. <laughs> uh, he's got the one kill. That should be where this ends. What a way from Thrash as well. So ult is gonna be online. There's absolutely no way you're charming Ace. Ace, Ace, <laughs> you guys, Ace, Ace. Whoa, oh, okay. Well, again, man. Maybe we better start three, believing three, three in more this. Three more to go. Three more. No, okay. <laughs> Imagine. What a world that would be to live in. Still great damage, all things considered. And had the ulti online before he even went down. Oh, five rounds in a row, though, for T1. Four ultimates online. Okay, the Viper's Pit's gone, but it was put to pretty good use. And on the other side of things, the Reckoning, Viper's Pit, Thrash, all strong ultimates building up to be a competitive round. But the fact is, T1, since the 
9-5 scoreline since the pistol and follow-up loss. They have looked unstoppable. Clutch plays, you name it, they've had it all. And for FPX, bear in mind, a big lead on their own map choice. Bind, I'm not confident in. They need to find something here. Oh, wow. Okay, lockdown's going to be used to take over control of C site. Four players here, but just take a look at the position of Zeta not lurking on A. Viper walls on C. This is going to be a much more direct round, one in which they don't intend to fall back, use secondary options. The plant is in, already found, and they're giving up all this space. Thrash won't be able to reach them. It can be recovered at least. Not in a great position, though, using it mostly for the information. That's not going to be back up and online. Showstopper used. Oh, wow. Now Sia. Well, we don't need to talk about that one. Bands picked up you call. Defuse being tapped. They're not sure. Someone could be on it right now. They need to swing and check. Maybe someone spotted it just around the edge of that wall. Saya, good for one. Lysor down. Ni Xiao up close. Got his double, but they're trading it right back. And T1 will not let go of this round. Keeping a tight grip all the way through. And now with a two-round lead, they look set to close out Lotus. Yeah, and, and the worst thing is as well is other than the Viper's Pit, FPX used absolutely everything All in this the round. The ults thrown through, the reckoning was to try and force them back. I, I think even Thrash, they were maybe expecting somebody to still lurk around within the site, but didn't find anything. And I have to say, Zeta in these post blood scenarios, unstoppable. I, I don't think he's faltered, gone down once. Yep. He won the 1v2, the double snake bite with a third kill in there as well. And now having that in the late round, Leading by example, it has to be said. I believe it's been a switch up for this matchup for him to go back onto the Viper. And honestly, it's been an incredible choice. Start of round, Viper's Pit. Orb for A. Oh, look at those pings coming through. T1 thinking about still committing to the A side, but bypassing this utility, bypassing the pit. But the, the thing is, there's not really that safe a spot to stand in the pit. Yeah. Like you're yeah. either on the cross back, with your back or you're right on the edge. Like I feel like this is an incredibly dangerous pit to try and sit in and huge reliance on Lysor to try and hold this one out. A lot of utility being put into delay, but they're not expecting that this is a full committal just yet. They still have that Viper Orb if things do get a little bit scary. It's probably going to go up with the 40 second, 30 second mark once this wall goes down. There you go, it's up, but oh, it's a little no. bit too late. They're already through. Now the Viper having to fight, and Ni Jiao is down. Viper's pit out of the round, and FPX still massively behind after all of that has been taken out of their hands. They only get one kill for their trouble, very little damage, no control on the way back through. The one thing is, they did just hear that jump. Aya is fully aware that Munchkin is around that corner on his right, and he's going to seek him out, but his teammates are on the side already. Uh, so even though he gets that kill, there's just nothing to say about it. The 125 HP, sure he's looking healthy, but there's two players lined up in a firing squad. And that'll put him to zero seconds later. 12 to nine, three chances for T1 to close out this map. And Bind, as you said, Tom, their map pick is up next. Yeah, and one that, again, they, they play quite a regimented composition. Uh, I believe that they actually used the Gecko themselves and it, it looks pretty damn good on their execution. So I would definitely be worried if you're an FPX fan, but they still have chances. Three rounds, but seven in a row now. That's the thing, Tom. They've just lost seven in a row. So you look at it and go, three rounds, this is not too much, yeah. but they've got to turn this right around. And even the ones they have won on their defense, pistol and follow up. That ain't yeah. repeatable. You ain't getting another one of those till the next map. Well, do you remember when Sire was having a bad game? Or a quiet game, I should say. Not even that it, long it's, ago. It, yeah, it's been, it feels like a lifetime now because he's been in a great spot. An aggressive, it's a dry peek out. Okay, they've cleared Munchkin at least. No utility to support it, but maybe that surprise factor. It at least locks down some of that control on one side of the map. Something that T1 might have to think about going back for. And in fact, the second they take that fight, the defenders immediately rotate away, just saying, okay, they're not going to challenge for this again. Oh, guess what? They are. A triple stack up on a 45 seconds, no contact, but no one should be getting contact till they burst into the site. You stick with three players on A. And in fact, 
Mute call goes more passive. It's the right call. Yeah. He would just get sectioned off and eliminated in a 1vx fight. Yeah. Instead, he has to he try to harass well. them on the way through and wait for his teammates to come in. They have a lot of utility for the way back in. That oh, nade uh, is going to go through. Zeta well, already way. gone. The nade's a little late, so it's not going to catch a kill, but that might have given them a chance. Yeah, Zeta has been the post plant king, so getting rid of him with a spam and him almost sacrificing himself to it is going to help them out massively. Four players looking to try and go back through on that retake. Lysor doing well. In fact, no trades to be had. Is left on to Sire. He's been fantastic. But with that level of HP, it is not going to be happening. FPX make the retake work, and they will live to fight another day, finally breaking that chain. That's the first time we've seen them with rifles in hand win a round. It's, yeah. it's nice to see. Maybe they finally found the solution, the push and pull <laughs> on the map working for them. More passive stance. He walks up. into it spraying. Like I like the confidence from Zeta, but that's that's mind numbing. Like it almost just gives him the free kill. And as I said, he's been the one you want in post spot. Yeah, he's been oh, ridiculously good. So, there. I mean, his utility belt alone does yeah. that. But then add him to it for sure. Big scalp to take. Oh, now just down to two. Overtime still very much possible. And again, they're going for the same sort of setup they had in the last round. Now, bear in mind, T1, they're expecting a repeat. They have got a multitude of players waiting for this level of aggression. A tap onto the orb, and this is where they try and execute instead. They've actually thrown the nade, almost blocking off their own corner. Again, another blip for FPX, a mistake, and oh, almost too easy an opener on the other side. They're going to try and actually push off the back of this. Sire player gets the kill with his nade instead of the gun. And now Berlin, this started off as a set play for the side of FPX. That has it's, it's caught off his own angle. This, this is going horribly wrong. Oh, oh no! Right onto the nano, he's seven HP. Oh yeah, good luck with that. Oh. Zeta's just shutting him down. And well, that seems to be the final nail in the coffin for the FPX side, Ni Zhao. You better start that ace chant if you want another round because FBX need one right now and it's only the one kill to be found. T1. They were looking down and out in that first half. FBX had the control. They were the cleaner team. But what a turnaround once they touch that attack side. Yeah, it's, it's all 